Our second property that's going to help us solve Laplace transforms as functions get more complicated is considered to be translation on the t-axis. Now, I think that that might be a little bit misleading. It's not quite the same as the translation on the s-axis. Hopefully that's relatively clear. Uh, what we're going to be looking at is a situation that's really common in engineering when things are either on or off or there's one function that fits or there's a second function that fits. It's just one or the other and it's got that dichotomy thing going. All right, so let's take a look at how we create that and then what we can do with Laplace transforms with that. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is how do we turn things on and off with equations? Well, the answer to that lies in a thing called the unit step function, also called the Heaviside function, named after the person who came up with it, Oliver Heaviside. So the unit step function, we write with this script U, kind of like the Laplace transform is written with that script L. So our unit step function on t minus a is defined to be the piecewise function 0 when t is between 0 and a, and it's 1 whenever t is greater than or equal to a. So basically what that does is it allows us to name a, we choose that parameter a, and that's the point where something gets turned on. And we can reverse it so that it's the point where it gets turned off if that's what works best for us. So this function is really useful in making piecewise functions easier to handle and easier to digest. We can write them as regular functions using this unit step function as a tool. So let's take a look at the piecewise function f of t equals 20t whenever t is between 0 and 5 and 0 when t is greater than or equal to 5. You might notice that this looks a lot like the unit step function, except we have functions plugged in here instead. So let's see how we could write this as a function with unit step functions in it instead. So first off, it's important to note that the unit step function at t minus 5, what it's going to give us is 0 whenever t is between 0 and 5 and 1 whenever t is greater than or equal to 5. So if I want this to equal 20t when t is between 0 and 5, then I'm going to have f of t equals 20t I need that because the unit step function is going to give me zero at that point. But then I can add or subtract anything I want times the unit step function and it's going to zero out between zero and five. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 20t times the unit step function of t minus five. And what that's going to do, between 0 and 5, the unit step function will be 0, so f of t will be 20t. Then after I get beyond 5 for t, then it's going to be 1. So I'll end up with 20t minus 20t times 1, or 20t minus 20t, or 0, which is what my piecewise function says. So this is how we would use this unit step function to create a function that represents a piecewise function without having to have the pieces of a piecewise function. So this brings us to what's called our second translation theorem. So if we have capital F of S equals the Laplace transform of some function lowercase f of t and a is greater than zero, then the Laplace transform of lowercase f of t minus a times the unit step function of t minus a is going to equal e to the negative a s times capital F of s. 
So let's consider a function f of t equals 2 minus 3 times the unit step function of t minus 2 plus the unit step function of t minus 3. So this is a piecewise function that we've rewritten using the unit step function. And we want to find and we want to find the Laplace transform of f of t. So we know that this is going to be 2 times the Laplace transform of 1 plus 3 minus 3 times the Laplace transform of the unit step function t minus 2 plus the Laplace transform of the unit step function t minus 3. So this is going to equal 2 times 1 over s or 2 over s minus 3 and then using our theorem we're going to have e to the negative a s where a is what we're subtracting from t so we'll have e to the negative 2 s and we're going to multiply it times the Laplace transform of the function. My function is just one hanging out there invisibly. So this is going to be over s. So we'll have minus 3 e to the negative 2s over s. And then similarly, we'll take the Laplace transform of the unit function, unit step function we'll of t minus 3. Again, 1 is the invisible function. So we'll have over s and a is the thing being subtracted from t, so we have e to the negative 3s over s. And that is our Laplace transform with our unit step function involved. So now, just like we did with the Laplace transform itself, whenever we do something like this, we need to be able to do the reverse to take the inverse. So the inverse Laplace transform of something that looks like e to the negative as capital F of s is going to be f of t minus a times the unit step function of t minus a. Now, sometimes we don't get this beautiful f of t minus a multiplied times our unit step function showing up. So an alternate form that is particularly helpful to us is one that tells us that if we have the, if we want to take the Laplace transform of some function g of t times the unit step function of t that's been shifted by a like this, then that's going to equal e to the negative a s times the Laplace transform of g of t plus a. So basically what we're doing is we're taking care of forcing the shift within that Laplace transform. So here's an example of how that might play out. Cosine of t is certainly not shifted by t minus pi the way our unit step function is. So let's deal with that. Just to help us in matching stuff up, it's good to notice that cosine of t is going to be our g of t in this case. And then we have our unit step function of t minus and pi will be our a. So our alternate form tells us to take this Laplace transform. What we're going to do is we'll have e to the negative a s, so to the negative pi times s, the Laplace transform, and we're going to take g, so cosine, and instead of having just g of t, we'll have g of t plus a, so we'll be doing t plus pi here, that we'll be taking the Laplace transform of. So now just by the behavior of cosine, we know that cosine at 0 is 1, cosine at pi is negative 1, and it does this back and forth, right? And it actually turns out that cosine of t plus pi is really just negative cosine of t. So what this really is, is e to the negative pi times s, the Laplace transform 
of negative cosine of t. I can pull the negative out in front, so I have negative e to the negative pi s, Laplace transform of cosine of t. So then I'm just taking the Laplace transform of cosine of t, and I know what that is. So I have negative e to the negative pi s times s over s squared plus, there's no a here to deal with, so it's just plus 1. And that's my Laplace transform. So we can deal with functions that are shifted on the t-axis the same way our unit step function is, and we can also deal with functions that are not shifted the same way our unit step function is. Either way, we can find the Laplace transform.